Okay, here we're going to focus on heart anatomy, being able to identify certain sections of the heart. And for this lesson, we're going to focus on the four chamber heart. So starting with the heart location, we're going to focus on the human heart in particular. Uh, so it's about the size of your fist, that's proportional for everyone. Its location is superior surface to the diaphragm, left of the midline, anterior of the vertebral column, and posterior of the sternum. So it is not located perfectly in the center of your body, it is left of the midline. And again, these terms, superior, anterior, posterior, left of midline, all come into play yet again as we see here. Now the mammalian or bird circulation all take advantage of this four-chambered heart. So while we're focusing on humans, a lot of this same would apply to mammals and birds. One pumps, one portion of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. This is called the pulmonary circuit. See here, pulmonary arteries. And the other portion of the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body called the systemic circuit. These two pumps operate together within a single unit of the heart. Now the vertebrae heart uh, are separated into two types of chambers. We have the atria, or singular atrium, as you see here, our right atrium and left atrium. They receive blood from the body or the lungs, and contractions of the atria send blood through a valve to the ventricles. So it's basically taking the blood here and sending it to the ventricles. The ventricle portions here, they receive blood from the atria, and they contract to send blood to the body or the lungs. So in those here, the muscles here for the ventricles are much larger than that of the atria, the atrium up here. This is because the ventricles have to send either to the, all the way to the lungs, or even a greater distance to the rest of the body. That's why we see this larger muscle here, the atrium is simply collecting the blood and pumping it to the ventricles. Now, human circulatory system, again, you can see it's quite complex. A lot of arteries, a lot of veins going through here. Uh, this diagram kind of gives you an idea of the percentage of blood and where it goes. What might be interesting if you look, okay, three and three, the bones, okay, the skin, 6%, 6%. Um, the liver is only receiving 6% directly to it, but 27% is leaving. That's because the liver has such a strong connection to the gastro um, GI system, gastrointestinal system, and also the spleen. So while 21% of the blood's going there, it's not leaving there, it's being diverted and going to the liver. So the liver is very important for blood filtration. And as a result, only get 6% directly, they get that additional 21% indirectly, so 27% goes back to the veins and leaves the liver. Dual pump operation, as this uh, GIF kind of shows here. The four-chambered heart acts as two pumps. One, the atria contract, forcing blood to the ventricles. Then the ventricles contract, forcing blood through the arteries to the lungs and the body. The cycle ends and the heart relaxes and then repeats again. So we see that here's our atria sending it to the ventricles. The ventricles are pumping and sending that. In this case, this would be going to the lungs. In this case, this would be going to the rest of the body. We see our valves here opening and closing allowing uh, blood to be controlled and pumped in an efficient manner. Keeping time, the sinoatrial node, the SA node, is nervous tissue that times the heartbeats. We see it located here. The SA node causes the atria to contract and sends a signal to the atrioventricular node, which is also known as the AV node, and that's located right here. So there's a sense of a slight delay, which is a good thing, because once our atria contract, that signal is then being sent to the AV node and signaling the ventricles to contract. If these both contract at the exact same time, blood would have nowhere to go. and Everything would just lock up. So we need the blood to go from the atria here to get to the ventricles, a slight delay before then it's sent out to either the lungs or the rest of the body. Systole pumping and diastole is filling. So um, we see our systole is the actual pumping and diastole is that filling portion. So this is the part of the cardiac cycle during which the heart refills with blood after emptying um, done from the systole or the contraction stage there. So we need a filling stage, we need a slight delay so that blood can fill in, in this case to our ventricles, before being pumped out to either the lungs or the rest of the body. So the timing is very important in the sense of what contracts when and there needs to be a slight delay to allow that blood to kind of fill and accumulate and then seal those valves up before it's pumped to the next portion of the body. 
heart valves. This is kind of an interesting gif here. It help controls blood flow. I uh, should be able to open completely to allow for efficient blood flow. Also needs to close very tightly. We see some locations in names of those particular valves. Uh, tricuspid valve has actually three components to it. The pulmonary valve here, the mitral valve, and the aortic valve here. So each of them is labeled differently, and that's going to help us when we start tracking blood flowing through the heart. We see them opening and closing here and how much that heart does kind of move here as our atrium contract and our, you can notice our valves here opening and then closing tight and then these valves are opening allowing blood to come in and force its way through here. It's very important that all these valves open and close efficiently to allow blood to move. Now the heart sounds, there's kind of a love dub and that's occurring due to the opening and closing of valves and the pressure that's being uh, built up there. So what gives the heart its sound is that simple opening, slam and close of the valves as a heart, that muscle, is constantly moving and forcing blood to different regions. Lastly, our heart murmur is the easiest method for diagnosis is to listen to it uh, with a stethoscope here. If valves are not fully open or closing, turbulence gets created, and this is what's called the heart murmur. And typically this is done on newborns and uh, young individuals here who just listen to the heart. We're trying to having that distinct love dub. If not, there's that murmur and that's causing turbulence and that could indicate there might be a problem with one of the valves either not fully opening or not fully closing.